Okay, we'll try it again. Hi everybody, Colleen Patrick Goudreau here. Let me know if you can hear me okay, see me okay, send a hello. Let me know where you're from and where you're joining me from. I've got Michiko here on my lap. I've got Charlie to my left. And it's a beautiful, well, it's starting to get sunny. It's a beautiful rainy day here in Oakland. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Is it wonky? Is it working with no problems? I'm a little nervous that it's not working 100% the way it normally would. So give me a... Give me an indication one way or the other so so we know that before we get started. Hi, Michiko. Hi, Michiko. I'm not seeing any comments from you all. Can you... Okay, I'm seeing a thumbs up. I'm seeing some thumbs up. Okay, great. We've got some people. Okay, here we go. Dana from Weatherford, Texas. Hi, Dana. Thanks for joining us. Uh, good. So is everybody good? Okay, we see hearts. Good. Working great. That's because I had to turn off my, unfortunately, my wireless. Good. Hi, Tina. Hi, Rochelle. Hi, everybody. Yay. Great. Well, Colleen Patrick Goudreau here, and I wanted to connect with everybody because we had such an amazing turnout yesterday for a house party we had for an organization I'm going to tell you about in a minute. And, um, and I have another meeting today in about a half hour, so I have to keep this short so I can go make some pancakes and finish up my sausages for our meeting today. But I just wanted to say hi to all of you first and encourage you to ask any questions you have. But um, Corin, hi. Hello, Karen. Tucson. We've got South Carolina. We've got Massachusetts, Vermont, Ohio. Denise, hello, hello, hello. And as I said, Texas already too. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, Melissa, good to see you, Melissa. So, first of all, I want to make sure everybody is already subscribed to the Animology Podcast and that you've listened to the new episodes. So, Animology Podcast is about the animal-related words and expressions we use every day. And the newest episode is an interview with Michelle Simon, who's a public health attorney. And it's about the dairy industry who is trying to stop plant-based milk companies from using the word milk on labels and on packaging. So it's a pretty fascinating interview and I encourage you to listen uh, to it and please share it with everybody you know. So Cindy from Ohio, good to see you. David Bahaka, you miss me. I know it feels like it's been a while, hasn't it? It does feel like it's been a while. And Julio from Florida and hello Stephanie from Washington. I love it. What a great group. And hello Carolina from Argentina. Fabulous group of people. So first of all, you know, definitely ask me any questions you have. I just really want to give everyone some of my thoughts about the state we're all in where people are feeling powerless and people are feeling fearful and people are feeling frustrated. I'm certainly feeling all of those things as I look at what this particular administration on a federal level is doing to animals, uh, the number of environmental um, protections that are being eroded, um, protections that are being reversed, like wolves being able to be shot on site in Wyoming now, which is incredibly concerning for me. And, you know, we need to be a voice for animals in every way, um, certainly making sure we're contacting our federal Congress, U.S. Congress uh, representatives to encourage them to vote for animal-friendly legislation and vote against animal-harmful legislation. And there are also a lot of other things we can do. So if we're concerned at all about environmental and animal regulations and protections uh, being eroded, you know, we can get involved on a local level and we can get involved in a way that does affect the rules and the laws that are being put in place and reversed for animals. So for instance, the organization that I had a house party for at my house yesterday is called Swing Left. And it's an organization, it's basically a grassroots organization grassroots organization, uh, which has been started by a number of volunteers, and they encouraged people who are interested to have house parties uh, this weekend. So I had 30 people, 10 of whom were strangers, in my house yesterday, and it is, and there, apparently there were 600 house parties happening across the country, and it's all about taking back the House of Representatives, and for those who are not in the U.S., perhaps you can think about this in ways that would be relevant for your own area. But in this way, it was about, it is about, this whole strategy is about taking back the House because without a check uh, and checks and balances on this particular administration who's running ramshod um, all over the things that I care about and I think millions and millions of people care about, basic environmental um, protections, basic human rights, basic animal protections, uh, and in, in order to change that, if those are the things we care about, we need to be able to have a voice in Congress. And the way to do that is to take back the House. 
So there are 24 seats um, that would um, that would turn the House to um, at least have a Democratic majority. And that's the whole idea, is that there are swing districts all over the country. They've identified 52 swing districts, whereby a Republican won by only a 10% margin, um, or a Democrat won by 15% margin, and it's about um, getting boots on the ground, making sure the people who are in these areas have their voices counted, so registering people to vote, uh, canvassing door to door, and basically listening to what these people care about, and when we, as we get closer, um, certainly electing a candidate who would be able to turn that seat and change that seat so we have someone who represents the values we care about. So if you're interested at all and if you're in the United States, go to swingleft.org and join their mailing list, check out where your nearest district is, and you can get involved even if you don't have a swing district in, in driving distance to you. <clears throat> so. So swingleft.org, um, Kelly, is where you want to go. It's What I love about it is that it's very strategic, it's very single-focused, and it's very doable. It is about saying, oh, okay, these are some swing districts in these areas where if we participate as... Um, in this democracy that we all belong to and go and help register voters because so often it's just people didn't register, they're not registered to vote and of course in midterm elections people don't show up um, to vote as much as, uh, as in the presidential elections. So this is a key time. The 2018 midterm elections are everything to be able to take back the House and what we need to do is take about 30 seats and we can do this. We had, as I said, 30 plus people here at the House yesterday and we have our first um, date. If you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, you can join us and there are hundreds of people all around the area who will be going to the Modesto area once a month and we will be, again, registering voters, recruiting volunteers and having door-to-door -door canvassing where we're listening to people and, and hearing what they care about. So it's pretty fantastic. Yeah, it's it just started just a couple months ago in response to, okay, what can we do? And we can all keep calling our senators and keep calling our members of Congress and I absolutely encourage us to do that. I know that it can get tiring and I know that people can get tired of calling get those postcards with pre-posted postcards and get the stamps so that you can write the postcards as well. And we need to keep doing that because our federal, national uh, members of Congress need to know what we care about in terms of the federal level. But in terms of a strategy to be able to have checks and balances on an administration that is frankly dangerous to so many vulnerable groups, including animals, including disenfranchised humans, including just the environment in general, climate change, reversing things that would um, slow down climate change. It's frightening. And in order to have a check on that, we need to take back the house. So it's a very clear strategy, and that's what I love about it. If you care about animals, this is a strategy you can take part in. Keep doing what you're doing if you're already working for animals in other ways. But you know, this message to you, this is not in you know, this this is not in any way different than what I've been talking about for years, which is doing what we can to be a voice for animals. And if you want to be a voice for animals, then the people who are going to speak for animals, um, if you look at the records of Democrats across the across the board, they are the ones who uh, who vote at, for animal friendly legislation. And I can speak for the district that we're going to be working in uh, right now. There is um, there is someone who is against many of the things that we care about. And if he gets elected again, more damage will be done. So it's a matter of finding someone who, and putting someone in the seat who is uh, sympathetic to uh, to the things, to progressive values. So um, Swing Left, Jeannie said, um, is happening here in Chester County, Pennsylvania. I love it. So yeah, so again, swingleft.org, and you can find your local swing district. Again, the swing district means it's an area, it's a district whereby the Republican who holds the House seat uh, only won, won that seat by a small margin, 10% uh, or less. And so it's, uh, it's a matter of just <laughs> getting boots on the ground. And I love their approach. It's very compassionate. It's very much about listening to the people in these districts, hearing what they have to say. It's not about having talking points and going and hitting people over the head with them. It's about developing relationships and creating a dialogue. And as you know, that's something that I care about very much. Hello, Will, and you're on um, day 26 in the 30-Day Vegan Challenge. I love it. Wonderful. Thank you for, for taking the 30-Day Vegan Challenge um, from London. We're going to be in the London area come 
July, we're doing a walk through the Highlands in Scotland, which we're very excited about. So, so that's what I wanted to say. People can keep writing down um, uh, uh, swingleft.org in the comments and, and let other people go and find that. So number two, again, please write down Animology Podcast and animologypodcast.com and encourage people to go listen. Um, we're really still growing the listenership for Animology, and I think it's incredibly an important, uh, an incredibly important uh, project uh, to talk about the animal related words and expressions we use those that are violent and how to not use violent language about animals and those words that actually have animals hidden in their origins that most people don't know I've talked about the word muscle the word muscle comes from the word that means mouse uh, the word tragedy comes from the word it means goat uh, the word coccyx comes from the word that means um, cuckoo cuckoo bird speak so um so there are so many like that and i have so many more coming out i've got five in the queue ready to be released your support actually makes this possible and enables me to release these more and i can put out lots of smaller um shorter episodes as well so the more you're able to support me the more i can do and i think it's incredibly important um so what are we asking about um do, 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 do. I'm going back. Um, Dana says, does anyone know how to share this from my phone? I can't find how to do it on these live videos. Thanks, Dana. Yeah, that's a good question. There should be a way for you to share while I'm speaking. Um, Jeannie said there should be a share button on the left. Debbie's asking you what kind of phone. A Galaxy 7. Oh, she sees it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, wonderful. So yeah, you you can all share right now, and please share this with your um, with your Facebook followers, whether or not it's live or after we've already um, finished, because this is going to be great for people to be able to understand what it's all about and get involved. So thank you for sharing. So again, number one, swingleft.org. Number two, Entomology Podcast. The other thing that we're doing today is um, in about in just about forty minutes, uh, five. Uh, other members of the board of an organization that we founded called East Bay Animal Pack. It's the East Bay Animal Political Action Committee. And it's a way to elect officials who are, again, going to pass animal-friendly legislation and who um, who will be animal-friendly candidates. So, um, you know, money is in politics. That's the way it is. And political action committees, they just basically enable people to contribute to campaigns as a group which is going to be a larger amount than you can do to as an individual. And the idea is to work with candidates who are animal friendly and get them elected and work with those who are already in office uh, and and work with them on animal friendly legislation. So right now we're working on banning wild animal acts in the city of Oakland. Other cities around the country have already done this. Everybody can get involved doing this. Everybody can get involved working with their city council. Use other cities who've already done this as a model. PETA actually on their website they already have a list of all the cities who have um, who have banned um, wild animal acts in their cities. So you can model what other cities are doing and work with your city officials. These are the kinds of things that we can do locally, working politically, working in a way that is very effective, and working for animals. And so you're engaged politically, and you're also um, engaged for animals. So you can also start a political action committee of your own. We're having our first official meeting today, and I'm very excited about it. And um, and one of the things I'm thinking about is having our compassion retreat again, in this time in September. Last year we did it in May. And if you're all interested, write to support at joyfulvegan.com. We're just taking everybody's names and email addresses who are interested. And the focus of this year will be political engagement, compassionate language, compassionate communication, compassionate framing, and political engagement. So if you're interested and you'd come out to Oakland, it would be um, fantastic. We're going to have um, a lot of really important panels and conversations around how we can all get involved. And one of the things I think we'll do is actually have our board for our East Bay Animal Pack participate so we can talk to others about how to start their own political action committee in their own in their own city. So if you have any questions, now is the time to ask. I have only mm, seven more minutes before I have to go and finish up uh, making brunch for our, the, our friends who are coming. It's going to be very painful to get up because Michiko is on my lap right now. It's already painful now because my legs are crossed and they're atrophied. However, telling my cat she can't be on my lap anymore is more painful than my legs being atrophied. <laughs> so, um, 
Will says, are we able to view these panel discussions online? That's a great idea, Will, so it's something I would take into account, seeing, um, being able to videotape them. I don't know what the laws around campaigns are and campaign finance uh, is in, in England, in the UK, so something like that may not pertain specifically, but certainly there will be other panels and other discussions around compassionate language and framing that I think would be helpful. So that adds another component of expense, obviously, but uh, in terms of filming them and being able to distribute that. But but I will definitely keep that in mind because I think it would be really helpful for people. Um, great. Kelly says, I would love to do that. So the first thing I would say, Kelly, so you don't have to wait for us, by the way, is just take a look around and see um, about any other political action committees that are in your area. So you would, um, you would go to your Secretary of State's website, first of all, and you would search for some kind of political action committee for animals. Just search for, you know, animal pack and animal political action committee. That's the first thing you want to do to see if there are others there. Um, there might be a political action committee already created that you don't know about. We have already... Um, we have already decided that ours is the East Bay, so you don't want it to be too large and you don't want it to be too narrow. So we are the East Bay in, in San Francisco Bay Area, so Oakland, um, Berkeley, Alameda, uh, we're kind of focusing on, on those areas. Um, I have not picked the dates yet, Melissa. I'm looking, and um, it's probably going to be mid-September. That's, that's what I'm thinking. I have to look at the dates and, and be sure. I have a couple other things. In fact, the person I just put a call out to, I saw that just texted me while I've been on this uh, um, broadcast. So, uh, so more information should be, um, I should have more information very soon. And as soon as I do, I will put it up and it will probably be a similar price to last year. It was two to $300 to just come and it was for the entire weekend. And, um, and I think it was really valuable for people. And then we had a, we had a second tier for people to get a little extra and people came to my house and, um, we had a little, we had a little soiree of a limited group of people. So, um, so you just get a little bit more for, for just a little bit more. So that's the idea. Um, can I guarantee to your sightings? I cannot guarantee, although I'll have to do what they do at Farm Sanctuary where like, you know, for their events, they make sure they're, they, they don't feed the animals until uh, all of the people arrive. I don't have the flexibility to do that because these are wild animals, obviously, but, um, but uh, <laughs> I would love to be able to guarantee. I can guarantee beautiful nature. That's for sure, and I can definitely guarantee recommending some hikes so that you can see wildlife in the area. Um, good, yeah, great, Melissa. So we'll see what we can do. Um, so I think that's everything he's asked. Um, and hello from the Netherlands, said Cesar. Hello, Cesar, on your 29th day. That's awesome. That's fantastic. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Make sure you stay tuned and make sure you're also all joined. Uh, the There's a 30-Day Vegan Challenge support group on Facebook that is being moderated by Sheree, who's here, or Sherry. I know I always call you Sheree. Sh Sherry, Sherry, um, who's here, um, at least I saw her a little bit ago, and she is the moderator, and it's fantastic, a fantastic group of people. So just because you finished the 30-Day Vegan Challenge and you won't be getting emails from me every day uh, doesn't mean you still can't be engaged and have support. So go join the 30-Day Vegan Challenge online support group. It's a closed group, but people can um, ask to join, and everyone, I recommend I recommend doing that. You're welcome, David. Thank you for, for, for your support. And um, Melissa said that's the tail end of rattlesnake baby season, but maybe they'll be done early. That's funny. Melissa's an awesome snake advocate. So um, if you have any more questions, you have about three minutes, um, and I'd love to hear any questions you have. But again, go to swingloft.org, get involved. Um, hello, Penelope. Go to Animology Podcast, and please listen to the new episode, subscribe to the podcast, and share the podcast. Uh, Hi, Sherry. <laughs> um, and what else? And the third thing is start looking around to see how you might be inv get involved with uh, at least replicating some of the things right now because Ringling Brothers has closed. It is a really good time to work with your city to ban animal acts, wild animal acts, wild and exotic animal acts in your city. Uh, now is the time to make sure that we close the gap so that another traveling circus with animals does not fill in the void that Ringling Brothers is leaving with their closure. So it's very exciting. It's a very exciting time and there's a lot we can do. So I know people are feeling again, so fearful and, 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 and so vulnerable. And also people are asking, what can I do? And that's the best question we can ask. That's the best thing we can do is be involved and get active and be engaged. And for me, 
you know, there's just so much we can do. Obviously, reflecting our values in our daily behavior and being vegan is the number one thing for me because it just informs and reflects everything I am and everything I care about and all the compassion I have. So that's kind of the start. And then from there, there's just a lot we can do. And getting involved politically, uh, as I said, to my mind, is just incredibly effective because because this is permanent stuff, because it's pretty hard to reverse laws uh, once they're in place. Barring, of course, what the current administration is doing. Um, so Will asks, what's the latest on the records of animal safety uh, being taken down? So um, Will's asking about the animal welfare records that were taken down uh, from the USDA website, website, and they're still taken down. They're, they're still removed. The lawsuit they were using as an excuse for why they took the records down has been dropped. It was the lawsuit um, by, um, by uh, a... Um, horse soaring uh, um, uh, company, basically, and um, that lawsuit has been taken down. So there's no reason those records should not be put up. Unfortunately, animal groups are suing the government to get them back up online, and they're still not up online. So, you know, much time and many resources and many dollars will unfortunately have to be spent to do this. But it's the right thing to do, and do not stop telling the USDA to put these records back. Do not stop contacting your senators. The Senate um, vote for the um, SJ-18 that I talked about, um, it's not on the Senate floor yet, but you can still definitely contact your, uh, your representatives about it. So I will be continuing to let you know about these things, get on the list of organizations who are paying attention to these things. Obviously, the Humane Society of the United States, Wayne Pacelli's blog has been instrumental in making sure that we're staying in touch about these legislative issues. Uh, so, and as far as a, a national-wide PAC goes, um, definitely go join and support the Humane Legislative Fund because that's about, again, electing officials who are animal-friendly and making sure we pass animal-friendly legislation. Melissa, thank you. I testified before our state senate for the first time this week against a snake shooting bill. A friend and I got together yesterday to figure out how we can get more people involved um, locally on an animal and environmental issues. Love it. Thank you, Melissa, for what you do, and thanks everybody for speaking on behalf of animals. I'm so grateful. I am going to go now and get ready for our meeting, so, um, so have a wonderful day. Now I have to get Michiko off my lap, which is very difficult to do. <laughs> Please share this video with everyone, and thanks everybody for the animals. This is Colleen Patrick-Gaudreau.